so that everyone in the room knows who everybody is, we usually start with a round of introductions on this side, maybe a couple of opening comments if you wish, and then we'll just hand it over to you guys to run with. Um, we reserve the right to interrupt you anytime we want to. And we also will ask you some questions when we're finished. And just bear in mind that any questions, commentaries, critiques, whatever, they go back and forth, the sole purpose of this is to make your end product better and to make your research more successful. And some people are more sensitive to feedback than others um, on, a, on a professional and critical scale, but you're going to get it. And that's great. You know, Take every ounce of it, digest it, think about it, how can you incorporate it. You may come to the conclusion that the comment is not on point and dismiss it, but don't do that after you think it through very carefully. So take everything as an opportunity to improve what you're doing, and that's, that's why we're here. Right, that's why we're here. All right, so I'm Frank Cole. I'm the director of the Gemstone Program, um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun watching these students grow from uh, freshmen to seniors, and this is a nice stepping stone when you get to you have to present what you want to do, you've thought it through, and it's a, it's a great place to be. It's kind of like the launching pad. So I think this is an exciting time. So I'm, I'm uh, John Dinman. I'm their mentor. I'm having a blast with them. They're really good. Good guy. Good group. I like to hear that. <laughs> Kristen Scandal, the Associate Director of the Gemstone Program. I'm Nadelina Trangarava, the librarian for the, for the team. Cool. Uh, my name is Kevin Dean. Uh, I'm a graduate student here at Maryland. I work with John on a uh, startup company we're trying to launch around RNAi. So I kind of informally advise the team <laughs> on occasion. Fantastic. And with that, Go, we shall begin. Okay. Hi, I'm Leanne. I'm Joe. And I'm Chris, and we're Team Panacea. So the problem we're looking into is that current methods of altering gene expression in mammalian cells have several flaws. One of those flaws is that they're too harsh on primary cells, which are cells that come directly from a living organism. <coughs> Electroporation, a current method of altering gene expression, it zaps a hole in the cell in order to uh, let RNA enter the cell. The hole has to be large enough for the RNA to enter the cell, but small enough so that the cell can close the hole up and repair itself. However, the hole is usually too large for the cell to um, repair, and this causes the cell to blow up. Since um, current methods are so harsh on primary cells, researchers use transformed cells in their research. Transformed cells are cancer cells, and the reason they use these is because they are robust and reproduce very quickly. While this is great for research, it doesn't necessarily show how primary cells would be affected by current methods, and therefore how a living organism would be. Uh, this brings us to our next point, which is that current methods are inefficient. Uh, since they're so harsh on cells, current methods need too many cells and too much material in order to uh, successfully work. Um, another flaw with current methods is that they're nonspecific. Because, um, so when you want to target one specific cell um, to alter gene expression, cells in the surrounding area are also targeted, even if you didn't want them to be. This is seen in the medical field with chemotherapy, and as you all know, chemotherapy is used to treat cancer cells. Uh, while it does target cancer cells, it also targets all fast-growing cells in the body. This includes hair, nails, everything. So while cancer cells are targeted, normal healthy cells are also targeted, and this is a, uh, not the greatest way to treat cancer. So the goal of our project is to make it easier to alter gene expression to facilitate medical research. And our research question is, how can therapeutic small RNAs be efficiently and specifically delivered into primary cells. Now you're probably wondering how we plan on using RNA to actually alter gene expression, and we are going to use that using a process called RNA interference, um, or RNAi. So the central dogma of biology is that you have genes and DNA, which then get transcribed into mRNA, which then get translated into a protein. And RNA interference disrupts this process using small RNA. And an example of a small RNA would be small interfering RNA, or siRNA. And siRNA bind to a specific mRNA um, and target that mRNA for degradation. So you don't have mRNA and you don't get a protein. And now the question becomes, how are we going to get these siRNA into a cell? So in order for the cell to intake siRNA, uh, we'll be exploiting the naturally occurring process of receptor-mediated endocytosis. There are molecules on the surface of the cell called receptors, and each type of receptor are uniquely structured so that they can only bind to one type of ligand. Uh, the relationship between the receptor and the ligand is much like the concept of a lock and key, where only one type of key can open one type of lock. 
So as you can see, the receptor binds to the ligand, and this triggers a, a, a cellular response which comes in form of a pinching motion uh, that basically uh, envelops the ligand and our siRNA. And this creates a vesicle that transports the siRNA and the ligand into the cell where the siRNA will exit the vesicle and target mRNA for degradation. So, to, so now we will be taking a look at our delivery vehicle protein. So our delivery vehicle protein is, consists of three parts, the ligand, the linker protein, and the hepatitis B virus RNA binding domain. Uh, so the ligand is used to gain access to the cell. The linker protein is used to link the ligand and the RNA binding domain. And the positively charged RNA binding domain is used to attach the negatively charged siRNA onto our delivery vehicle protein. Uh, they attract each other much like magnets, thanks to their opposite charges. And now we're going to be taking a look at the ligands we plan on using. Our first ligand is interleukin-8, which, um, which is a singling molecule that cells secrete in order to attract immune cells um, that have IL-8 receptors on their surface. And by using IL-8 as our ligand, we can now express or alter gene expression in a specific subset of immune cells. The next ligand we are planning on looking at is GP1, which stands for glycoprotein 1. This is a protein derived from the Machupo virus, and it binds to the transferrin receptor. Now, transferrin receptors are receptors that allow cells to intake iron, which means they are expressed on every single type of cell. And by using GP1 as our ligand, we now have the ability to alter gene expression in all types of cells in a way that is a lot more gentle and more efficient than current methods. And the following is how we expect our completed delivery vehicle with an attached siRNA to work. So we have a cell, we have a receptor specific to the ligand on our delivery vehicle protein, and the delivery vehicle protein will bind to the receptor and begin to become internalized. Once it's inside the cell, the siRNA will dissociate from the RNA binding domain and exit the vesicle. It will find an mRNA um, specific to it to bind to, target it for degradation, and boom. Boom. <laughs> so in order to realize our goal, our research will be broken up into three phases. Phase one is constructing the expression vector, which will produce our delivery vehicle. Phase two will be producing the actual delivery vehicle. And phase three will be purifying and testing that delivery vehicle. Phase one, constructing the expression vector. This will be done <coughs> in the lab, and inside the expression vector will be a methanol-inducible promoter which will activate transcription of the DNA of our delivery vehicle when in the presence of methanol. The secretion signal, alpha factor, and recombinant gene for our delivery vehicle will then secrete the cell from the Pickia Pastor, uh, excuse me, will then secrete the uh, delivery vehicle from the Pickia Pastor cell, which we later explain in phase two. The expression vector will also be, will also contain a his 4 selectable marker, which is necessary to synthesize histidine, which will also be explained later on in phase two. So once we have the expression vector completely constructed, we're going to want copies of it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to place the expression vector in E. coli, which will then produce our expression vector on an industrial scale. Once we have the copies of the expression vector, we will extract them from the E. coli and move on to phase two. So the goal of phase two is to <coughs> integrate our expression vector into the chromosome of Pickia pastoris, which is the type of yeast cell that we will be using. Uh, however, to ensure that all of our yeast cell can contains our expression vector, we'll be taking advantage of the fact that uh, Pickia contains a defective His4 selectable marker, which means that His, uh, Pickia cannot survive in the absence of uh, histidine. So here we have our circular uh, expression vector. However, the chromosome of Pickia is linear. So in order to linearize our vector, we'll be introducing an, a restriction enzyme, a restriction enzyme which will cut it, like so, and by exploiting the process of homologous recombination, we will place the uh, His4 selectable marker onto the Pickia chromosome. Uh, and throughout this process, uh, the gene that we want to encode for our delivery vehicle protein will also be placed on the Pickia chromosome. And this is what we are hoping to look, we were looking for. Um, so in order, uh, after this step, we will be placing the Pickia in a histine-free environment to select for uh, the Pickia that will produce our delivery vehicle protein. 
So how does, our, uh, how does the delivery vehicle protein actually get made? Well, by placing the pigia that we have selected in an environment uh, containing methanol, it will uh, trigger the methanol inducible promoter, which is basically like a start button that allows for the pigia to begin to transcribe our delivery vehicle protein. Once the protein has been made, uh, it will be secreted out into the media using the secretion signal. And this concludes phase two. So at the beginning of phase three, we now have media with our secreted, secreted protein. But in addition to that protein, there are three or four other proteins that Pikia naturally secrete. So now we have to purify it, and we will be taking advantage of the positively charged RNA binding domain and pass it through a negatively charged anion affinity column. Once our protein is purified, we will allow the delivery vehicle to associate with an siRNA of our choosing and introduce it to a cell. In order to confirm that our delivery system is actually working, we are going to check for a decrease in mRNA expression and a decrease in protein expression. To look for a decrease in mRNA, we will use a procedure called QRT-PCR, which stands for Quantitative Real-Time Polymerase Chain Reaction. And QRT-PCR basically amplifies mRNA hundreds and thousands of times and uses logarithmic equations to back calculate the amount of mRNA present. In order to quantify the decrease in protein, we will use an immunoblot assay, also known as a western blot. And this procedure involves running all the proteins in a cell through a gel and allowing labeled antibodies to bind to a specific protein that we're interested in. We can then compare the sizes of the protein bands in order to confirm if our gene was actually knocked down. So at the end of the next two and a half years, we aim to have expanded on a novel system of delivering therapeutic small RNAs into a cell in a way that is a lot more specific, um, more gentle, and more efficient than current methods. What's really cool about the system is that it's modular, which means if you get the right combination of ligands and siRNA, you can theoretically knock down any type of gene in any type of primary cell. In order to accomplish all of this, we are going to need a lot of money. <laughs> and Gemstone, the Gemstone program will give us $600, um, but as you can see, the, our project is significantly more expensive, which means we will have to constantly be looking for and applying to grants. So the timeline for our project is beginning this semester and going into the summer, we plan on beginning phase one and data collection. By summer, we plan on moving on to phase two and phase three by fall of this year. We will also uh, present at the junior colloquia fall of this year, and by spring of 2015, we plan on finishing phase three and data collection. We will then begin writing our thesis and work on that for the next year until spring of 2016 when we will finish our thesis and present the senior presentation. During the next two and a half years, we will also attend conferences, apply for grants, and expand on our literature review. Uh, here are some references. And we would just like to take this time right now to thank Dr. Dinman for your guidance, your knowledge, and your patience with us. And also to Kevin and Chanda for all the articles and all the information that you've given us. And to Dr. Cole and Dr. Skendel for making this possible. And of course to our librarian, Ms. Changalova, for all your support and all your information. Uh, and at this time, we'd like to take any questions that you may have. And thank you for listening. Well, first off, great presentation and a, a very strong proposal. Well, well done. And I love the base pair timeline across the bottom. That's, that's <laughs> really, who, whose idea was that? <laughs> so, yes. That's yes. fantastic. <laughs> I'm really curious what the next two slides are. Step <laughs> 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 <Seven> away. Symbolize. <laughs> 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 that's where they do inter their interpretive dance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where we typically do this, we, we allow the, we, uh, we invite the external experts and the mentor to start the <coughs> questioning because there you really know what you're talking about. And then we'll follow up with some other issues um, after we get past that nitty gritty. And um, again, feel free to take notes, feel free to ask response questions, get the answers you want, that's why we're here. And um, uh, Kevin, you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, I guess one, one question, so uh, very nice job. Uh, you guys did a very good job of explaining. Uh, all that stuff. I have to explain that routinely to non-science people, so I understand how difficult it is. Um, <laughs> I guess one question I had was regarding kind of the actual work plan to do this. So, kind of just actually executing this stuff in the lab takes a lot of time. So, just curious, who do you guys? How many people are you guys planning on uh, actually? How are you going to execute the lab work? Who's going to do it? And how are you going to? Are you going to fund yourselves to do that, or?
just do it moonlighting or what? Um, um, mm -hmm. Well, we plan on splitting into small sub teams um, okay. to accomplish every stage of the research. And <clears throat> in order so we all can learn these laboratory techniques, we plan on rotating in. Okay. Yeah. I guess just one thought is uh, it can be very difficult to do lab work by committee, so it probably makes sense <laughs> to have at least like a couple of people who are really responsible for driving it, and you can like bring people in, but there needs to be one person or maybe two, two or three people accountable for it. Best fit would be one good idea. So. Can I suggest talk to Team Medics, one of the senior teams. They um, they also did an in vitro study and they're in cell bio and genetics with Dr. Breiken. And they ran into problems at the beginning where they weren't keeping their lab schedule quite right and they lost a lot of cells through that process. I think you can learn from their mistakes um, and come up with a really good plan. Because by the end of their junior year, they were very successful. But at the beginning, they ran into several roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And it all had to do with research by committee mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how to pull that off. And they were very successful. The scheme they came up with worked. So you need a, a work management plan. Yes. Yep. Um, I guess another uh, good thing in general moving forward, so you talked about attending conferences, um, I guess junior and senior. Uh, if you're actually you know, building something for a potential customer or researcher, it'd be good to try to engage them earlier in the process. So just trying to reach out to a couple of research. We're actually trying to do that with uh, John. <laughs> uh, I'm actually trying to do that for the kind of startup company, so I can try to help you guys out with that. But just trying to talk to people who actually be using this stuff, you can learn a lot about like how you're designing it and things you may not be thinking of, uh, just kind of designing this stuff in the lab. So. Yeah, actually, I think that it would be a really good idea. Again, with the management plan, maybe somebody would be take the lead with like sales, right? And that person would go out with Kevin. That would be a great idea. Yeah. You know, I think that'd be a really great idea. So we could talk about that. Yeah. And did you receive the DCI core information? Did you see did that? I don't know if I sent that to you or not, but that might fit in. It's um, I will send that to you with some feedback. Mm -hmm. But it it would combine exactly what you're doing and what you're talking about with mm -hmm. it's like a five week program that it has some funding and also helps you apply for grants that. Um, and I think the program fits in well, so I'll make sure I send that to you after. Other questions you guys have? Um, that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I know where the rough edges are. Yeah. I know where the holes are. Um, and there are holes in your, your understanding uh, of the yeast genetics, of the protein purification, expression, that kind of stuff. But I think that, you know, when you're actually... Hands-on is the way to learn this and fill these holes. Because, you know, right now it's just all theory to you. And when you actually start working with it and you hit each phase, that's when we really uh, fill the holes in, in, your, in your knowledge and your understanding. Right. Yes, questions? And uh, also, uh, this is just as a recommendation for you, uh, we just got a subscription to a journal of visualized experiments. So you may check this journal for some hands-on lab techniques on how to uh, the, uh, do the experiments. So it will be very helpful also to use this journal and include it in your references because this is uh, state-of-the-art uh, research that you could use. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll definitely thank take you. a look into it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I have a few things I'd like to bring up. One is um, this not being my area of expertise. Uh, I enjoyed your read, read through your proposal. I think it was very well structured. Whether there's holes in it or not, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it kind of made sense to me. Um, you know, I glossed over some words I didn't understand. I didn't bother to look them up. But um, it made sense. The logic made sense. The story made sense. Um, so it gave me the idea that the writing team did a pretty good job of crafting the message, which is very important in any branch of science or research you're into. Is like Kevin said, you're you're always presented to somebody, and you have no idea what their level of understanding is. If you can get the the story across, they can work, there's some technical guy in the background who can work out the details. But if you can get your story across, you're gonna be in good shape. So you, you're well on the road there. I really like the section you put in towards the end about your limitations. I think that's a little bit young researchers um, neglect that a lot of times going into it because you think you don't have any limitations. But, you know, every project has lots of limitations. You can discover tons of limitations as you go forward. But recognizing what some of them are up front is great. It gives the uh, 
evaluated the, the thought that you thought through this and said, we can do A, B, and C, but we're not going to be able to do D and E. It's just not going to happen. And that, that's really good. Okay. Um, well, the detailed things, the, the presentation I thought was very good. Um, I like the dramatics. I like the boom. I like the, you know, we, we blow up cells and blast holes in cells and things like that, which makes it very clear. That's great for an audience of lay listeners. If you're in a room of technical uh, people who are in this field, you don't want to go there, right? So you targeted appropriately for three out of the five, but so you did, I guess, the right targeting. Um, <clears throat> but just keep that in mind. Know your audience. Always know your audience and know who you're aiming to get your message across to. Um, one question, because I'm just actually curious about two things. When this goes boom and it de deconstructs, where does it go? I I guess my cell biology is not good enough. I don't know where the little fragments end up. Are they just get absorbed, or they just kind of float around in the surrounding environment? <laughs> they get, no, they get scavenged. Yeah, they get rebuilt back in the new strands, right? Well, they eventually, get, the nucleotides get scavenged, the sugars get scavenged, the phosphates get scavenged. And nothing's wasted. Right, nothing's wasted in the cell. I remember that. <laughs> okay, so they do. They don't poof. They are reused. Okay. The Pikia, the one that's uh, dependent on um, histocine being, it has to have it, right? It has to have it introduced yes. to work, right? Is that technology flat proven? Is that just absolutely understood so you can rely on it as your base? Because that sounds like a pretty serious base assumption you're relying on it. That absolutely works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, homologous recombination happens all the time in cells. Um, so like sometimes the DNA in your cells will break and then that's a problem for the cell because like just bad things happen um so there is a method um that allows the cell to kind of repair its dna by swapping out like identical parts of different chromosomes for each other mm -hmm. and that's homologous recombination yep i got that part but is I, maybe i got it wrong correct me if i'm wrong but the the pickia with is a model you're using because it has a has a fault in it right yes and you rely on that as the foundation of your demonstration of a history, it's a um, essential amino acid, so right. without it, it's not going to be scientific. I think his question is about the PICI yeah. system, though. So, I mean, um, is it something people use or something you guys right. need to invent? It's something that's used, it's built to have the, the um, to have an issue with, with its selectable markers. So. It, it's okay. commercially available. It's, it's okay. the, the E strain is produced by Invitrogen. That's like a huge biotech company. So, it's a. Do you yeah. have 100% faith that this is a platform that works? Yes. yes. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, because. You, your reads like you have that faith, and you want to make sure that it is absolutely valid. Well, why was Pickia chosen instead of Pickia? Pickia pastoris is a, 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 a species of yeast, right? Why was it chosen as opposed to Brewer's yeast or uh, any other yeast or any other thing? Do you guys under? I mean, this is this is a hole I know that you guys have in, in your knowledge. It had to do with the FDA, didn't it? Or is that for? <laughs> well, but you could use any yeast. Okay. But why Pickia? Um, was it like one of the first ones to get its genome sequence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. Good try. Okay. Now it has to do with this whole secretion system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was it's just was developed by biotech, you know, to the problem is you don't want to bust a cell and then you, you have to deal with hundreds of thousands of different proteins. If you can get the cell to secrete your protein, right, and it picky only secretes like three or four other proteins, now purifying the protein is very simple. Because now, you know, you're only trying to pull one needle out of a haystack that, that contains three or four pieces of hay, as opposed to a needle out of a haystack that contains hundreds of thousands of pieces of hay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's right. very robust Good. system. Okay. Just for the lay, under, lay reader, I want to make sure I understood that was a good foundation to build on. That's, it. That's a good question. Um, to echo Dr. Cole's comments, I thought you did a great job with your presentation. And as Kevin said, as a non-science, um, person. I appreciated the ability to understand your presentation so well done. I am curious if you could tell a little bit about how did you explore, assess, and integrate scholarly resources into your proposal writing process? <laughs> okay, um, that's a really good question. Um, well, at first we, we actually got a paper from um, Kevin and Chanda and it was really helpful. It kind of described a very similar process 
and from that as a starting point we kind of just branched out and looked at other papers that were really similar um, and then as our project got solidified and we had to learn things about like homologous recombination um, and the PICIO system we found other papers um, and like in response to that. Also our librarians like, like helped us on look on the on, um, on the university's website like how to search things and and select exactly what we wanted to look for. Oh yeah, she pointed out like a lot of really helpful databases. Um, Great. Okay. You have more questions? Before I start asking about the budget? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like your budget. Um, 12000 is is, I think, for uh, as sophisticated of a piece of work as this is, is pretty, actually pretty reasonable, pretty low. Um, doesn't mean I have twelve thousand hours to give you. <laughs> um, just um, as you start thinking about searching for money, yes, we right now we're allocating six hundred dollars per team per year. So you got a couple, two or three versions of that coming through. Is that help out a little bit more than just one? But not much. But it is twice as much as we gave teams last year. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> your search for funding, um, I mean, any research team spends a tremendous amount of time hunting money. Okay, and your research team is no different from any other research team. So um, you have some plans yet, or are you just starting the, the, the hunt? Um, we have, <clears throat> we've looked at a number of different, I mean, obviously there's still a ton more to do, um, but we've started, we have one that we're, um, all going to uh, apply for individually, hopefully to funnel that into our team. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the most recent one that's come Where's that? Where's that from? Um, Sigma Xi. Uh, oh, okay. Um, no one speaks Greek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we'll just use the Chinese. It's a, <laughs> 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 um, it's a um, an organization that tries to give money to undergraduates for research. Okay. It's an individual award to an individual yeah. person. Right. Okay, we can add that. So they give a number of them. Yeah. Um, we all have chances and we're hopefully going to get some of yeah. that into it. And that's yeah. that's the first one. Saturate the pool. That we have. Right. Yes. So are you you're applying as individuals or are you applying with this project? Um, we're applying as individuals, but we'll, of course, mention that we're co um, okay. Workers. Just, That's, yeah. It's a the one we're specifically applying to and eligible for is only for individuals. Um, otherwise, it would have been okay. nice to do it all together. I got you. Yeah. Okay, and we're, if all goes well, I mean, any organization like that is not going to fund everyone on the team. Right. They're going to pick one because <laughs> they, they have to spend their money. What 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 are they going to give you at maximum? That's a thousand. It's not okay. a ton, but there hey, are, there are more down the it's down the pipe. Ten percent of what you need. That's not bad. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, as you continue to look, just remember that uh, grant applications, submissions, reviews, response, re-reviews, re-responses take a long time. Um, so you have to get on that this spring. Okay, and have to really get things rocking and rolling before summer comes. You really want to have money you can spend when you need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's plan A, which is this. Um, I'm pointing at the budget here that you provided. Um, what if you don't? Garner twelve thousand dollars from all the different sources by the time you need it. What's plan B? Reevaluating. Do you want to do part of our project? No, you'd no. suck off of me. <laughs> so, uh, can you guys? I guess there have been previous kind of biotech oriented teams. Maybe it'd be a good idea to talk to them and see have they been able to get any grants. I don't know if you've been in contact with them, but just kind of talking to someone who's been there is a good way to start. Uh, the other thing is, can you guys do like, I don't know if this is normal for Gemstone. I used to be in Engineers Out Borders and we did a lot of fundraising on our own. Mm -hmm. And we could probably raise it on the order of a few thousand dollars. Uh, we did like bake sales, like, I don't know, concerts, all kinds of stuff. It takes varying amounts of work, but could you do fundraising? events on the side? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely possible. We can take, we have mechanisms to, to take money from lots of different sources. Uh, we have individuals who you may approach in the corporate world who say, hey, I just want to write you guys a check to help you out. Um, that happens once in a while. Uh, we can take those checks. Just ask before you receive and we will make it happen. You don't want to end up with a check that we can't do anything with. Okay, it's got to be made out just right. Um, 
individuals will support teams. We have corporations which, who will support that will support teams. We have um, all kinds of granting agencies and programs, and who um, and we have one some we're talking about crowdsourcing some projects. So um, if you can think of it, if you can tap into someone who might have some interest, um, and especially if someone in the private sector when they're they're talking funding a team. They're talking about you know millions of dollars, and you're talking about hey, you know five thousand dollars would do you guys a tremendous boost. And they go, oh yeah, you know that's, that's out of petty cash. They can do that. So if you chat to people, um, just make sure you communicate through us first, so we don't end up in the the catch twenty two of we have a check that we can't do anything with, which we've been there before. It's really really hard. Um, that's all good. Think of Plan B. I mean, Plan B is a lot of times the research. You have a goal. You Soon, at one point, realize that your revenue stream or your what the assets you have, you can't reach that goal, so you have to go to Plan B, whatever that might be. So always be thinking what Plan B is. I have one suggestion. Probably it's not very feasible to uh, get the funding, but uh, the libraries have a library hour for undergraduate research. Unfortunately, we don't accept uh, team projects. If you, are, if you have written any research project on your own, you may apply for this award and get $1,000 to contribute to your future re research. If your plan A is successful, then you can use this money to go on vacation if you want. <laughs> but this is one source for uh, funding as well. And I know the Office of Undergraduate uh, Studies, they have... Um, the undergraduate research day on April 1st. April 30th. I, yes, so uh, you may participate in this uh, on this day and if you, I don't know, they, they give away awards as well for the best poster and best research paper. So you may investigate their website as well, what the deadlines are. So the money is not that, that many. Uh, they, they award $1,000 as well. Uh, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. And also, the last round of our ACC funding will be available this year. So look for an email from me. April first is the deadline for that, um, and we have an application that you can apply for. And don't miss that application. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, don't miss it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's that's you know I think you guys are in very good shape. If if you pull off the technical parts of the project. It sounds like mm -hmm. you've done your homework you need to to get to the launching point. Mm -hmm. So I think you're you're ready to go. Just don't lose fact of, lose sight of the fact that uh, you still have a lot to learn, and, and that's the whole reason you're here, right? The whole reason you're here. Mm -hmm. um, any other follow-up questions for anybody? All right. Well, well done, and thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions for us? Oh, right. Oh, um, actually, for Dr. Cole, mm -hmm. for your comment about teams that are crowdsourced, have there been specific teams in the past that have utilized this method in order to fund their research? Uh, we have not. It's just kind of a new phenomenon, as you know, mm -hmm. and um, we've had teams who are talking about it. We have not yet seen any fruits of that effort. Okay. But there's some teams talking about it, trying to do that. I think the next the next order of business, yes, financing and work plan, because uh, you know the 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 rate living the rate living step on these projects is always slowing. That's always the hardest part. Uh, it just takes time. But once that these homes are made, we're in great shape. So you know we got to really work out who's who's responsible for what. And Rajan is already in the lab, which is yeah. great. So I think well we'll talk about it. But I think you're going to be taking the lead in the lab. Okay. And we talk, the thing about, we didn't mention this before, but uh, everyone needs to have individually in the team their appropriate lab safety trainings. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And any other trainings you may need, you, you're not IRB, you're not a cook, you're clear from all that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so all you do is make sure you have the, the, the required lab safety trainings and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Most of those are online, pretty easy to crank out. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're very yeah. Okay, that's it. All right. Thank you. What are Thank your you. last two slides there? Are there two more? <laughs>